So I guess I'll start with saying welcome to Studio Tuesdays. So this is my attempt to, to push myself back into the studio and uh, get some stuff done and show you guys some stuff. And I can talk about, you know, some of my art stuff and or we can do goofy projects or, you know, if there's things that I do that you know that I do that you want to see, then, you know, just let me know and we'll work on that kind of stuff too. But Today, I just wanted to do something fun for Christmas. And it's something I did a couple of years ago was making these goofy little cards with the, um, with the. Look at the camera. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. I'm looking at my hands. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to teach me how to do these video things that are a little bit better because uh, anyway, because then I'm talking Otherwise to Otherwise, she'll just be looking at her hands. I'll be looking at my hands all the time. So anyway, I'm going to do these little Christmas ball things and they were like little zen doodles that I did and I put on cards and they were quite popular when I did them a couple of years ago so I thought well you know why don't we do some of those and it's an easy one to get started with and easy one for me to show you guys really quickly what we've set up here is there's a way that and I don't is it working yet so yeah so we're gonna have two screens is that right well you're gonna be up in the top right? so you can still see my face as I'm talking to you no you can't can oh. they? Can they? I don't know. Can you still see my face somewhere? No. No, nope. my face went away. <clears throat> do this. Okay, Bill's going to play again. Again, what I want to do is have it set up so that you can still see me talking to you, so that I can talk directly to you, but also so that you can see my hands and see what I'm doing on my desktop. Okay, and that'll, and then you can sort of switch between both, or because I don't think you need to look at me the whole time, but you might just want to. Do your own thing. These two. There. Now you get Karen and you should see the full screen. Yes. Can you see me and the screen? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Just so you know, I am not left-handed. So the way that we have this set up is um, it's mirroring what's on my desktop. So this is my right hand. <laughs> it's, it's left for me. So when I go to show you things and I'm going the wrong way, <laughs> it's because I'm trying to do it backwards. Okay. Um, anyway, so the cards, this is what I wanted to do with the cards. So uh, I like making lots of Zen tangles and lots of Zen doodles. And years ago I did these little cards and I think you guys might've seen some of the pictures that I did in that. You know, I think Bill sent out on Facebook and things like that. So generally what I do is I start with, a card stock and I like to make these cards myself. First thing that you have to do is make sure that you have actual envelopes that they fit in. There's nothing worse than making a beautiful card and then you don't have an envelope that it fits in. So make sure you have some envelopes that your cards are going to fit into and then you'll be able to go crazy and, and, and do them. When I'm making my cards, I use my, um, my cutter and I'm going to show it to you really quickly. It's super old, super full of paint, but it's, uh, it's one of these, it's not a guillotine. I don't like those guillotine cutters cause they don't cut straight, but something like this cuts really nicely. And I've used it for years. I use it not, not only to, um, cut my cards and cut everything I'm doing. Um, I also use it when I'm cutting my, my tags for art shows and stuff like that. So Anyway, it's quite easy. I, do, I can just put my paper in there and I can use the blade just to cut a nice straight line. And I don't have to think about it. I don't have to use a ruler. I can just cut it. And there's my two inch little square that I just cut. So if you don't have, you don't have to get a big one like this. Um, these are, uh, oh, I forgot the name now. Oh, Fisker, it says it right here. This is a Fisker cutter and it's just, it's a great tool that I have used for years. Um, with this one, the other thing that it does is I have a different wheel that I can put on here and it's a scoring wheel. So when I cut my cards, I can also put them in there and have them score that fold right down the middle. So it's nice and flat and nice and straight. So um, again, Fisker's is, is a great, it's a great product. The new ones are kind of clear and orange. They're a lot nicer looking than this and they don't have as near as much paint on them as mine does <laughs> so, anyway that's one of my favorite tools 
So for this demo, what I'm going to do is on this card, and I don't know if you can see it. And now I'm going to see if I can get up to the camera here. Oh, gosh. Just move it to the camera and that will. Move it to the camera. Oh. Camera's on the bottom. There we go. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. See that there's like a little um, square on this card. Indent. An indented square, I guess. I don't know if you can see it. Not really. Okay. It's very, very faint. What I did is, and I used to do this all the time with my cards, is I used to do like a little embossed square. And I just like it because it's a little bit bigger than the square I have. It kind of, it kind of, um, it kind of uh, makes it into like a little frame, but it's also a lot of work. One of the ways I did this, we're gonna have a visitor come and see us because I think my cat's gonna jump down here, is I used to do this where I would set up a template for my card I put my card down and then I use a folding bone to go around all the edges to make this embossed card, just to create that little sort of, hi, th this is Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> Moving right along. Move right along, yeah. Anyway, so this time we can do like a little embossed square, which of course you guys can't see because the, the light is, can you see it? I'm trying to see if I can see it in the, anyway, if you can't do that, or if you don't want to do that in Boss, in Boss Square, one of the things I like to do to sort of frame my pieces is I used to, sometimes I just use a piece of colored paper and then I can just put my square on there and put oh, it right on the good. card and see, it just sort of frames it a little bit without framing it. Okay. Yeah. Um, these squares are actually um, paint samples. So you can do something fun with old paint samples because you get all so, so many different colors. So, all right. So for this, for these ones that I'm doing, I was doing um, just a two inch square and then a, it's a one and a half inch circle. And I have circle templates. And of course they're covered with paint because you know I paint with them. So. This is one, this is a, this is a, like a, a drafting template. Um, you can get them, you know what, Michael's probably has some too. Um, they're quite good. This one, I think this is a Fiskars for some sort of cutting thing my mom had. And I took it from her because she didn't use it. So guess what I use it for? Yeah, spray paint and circles. So <laughs> anyway. I love the big circles. That's so awesome. I know, isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. Anyway, so um, the thing about these templates, I'm just going to tell you, this is like a little trade secret with these. If you have these, there's a good side and a bad side to these. Okay. If you have one of these green templates, if you feel there's like these little bumplies on the bottom, those are supposed to go down. And the reason they do that is so that when you are drawing your circle, so that the ink doesn't leak under because your circle is a little bit off the paper. So that's what those are for. So when you're using them, keep that in mind because if you just put it flat on, your ink will, will creep. Same with this one. This one, it doesn't have the little bumps, but um, it's got a little beveled edge. So when I don't want my ink to creep, I can just put it straight down, okay? So I think, it, I don't know. Oh, it is a Fiskars. Look at that. Fiskars is orange, so, so for this, what I was doing is I was just using these. I did a bunch of them. And I had a pan here somewhere where I put it on this one. So I just find a circle that I want to use. And then I just do my circle. And that's just the start of whatever I'm going to do. Okay. I also quite often, and as we're doing this stuff, I'm probably going to show you guys a lot of stuff that I do in my sketchbooks. I was sketching at work the other day and I did a whole page of circles. And then I just sort of doodled in them a little bit, thinking about what could I do that's different on a, on a, on a Christmas decoration and stuff like that. So 
that's just giving me ideas, right? And I always try anything that I'm doing, I try to also do some in my sketchbook so that the spec sketch, oh, sorry, the sketchbook is a record of what I do, gives me ideas. It's just a place for me to sort of record things. So um, you'll see a lot of my sketchbook coming up and I'll probably talk to you guys. I'll probably have a session on sketchbooks because it's big for me. All right. Next thing is doodling. And I have lots of ideas for doodles. I'm just going to open my little binder here. So bear with me as I grab it. Yeah. You should probably put that on the table so they can see. So this is a this is a book of ideas that I have. And I have pages and pages of these doodles. And Leslie's seen these before because she took a lot of my art classes. So anyway, these, um, I think what we'll do is we'll probably make them available to you on the website so that you can download them if you want. But whenever I see a pattern or I see a Zen doodle or a Zentangle, which is actually a copyrighted name, I quite often will play with it and see if I can come up with ideas of my own. And these are the kind of things that you can do on your circles. But I'm not going to use this today, but I will make these available. I just don't know when I'm, they're going to be available. And I probably, I think we have on the site, we're going to do a supplies, a supplies uh, list so that you can go and you can find some of these places, things on, on, on Amazon or whatever, if you want to order things. And I might just also have a resources list, which is, probably my personal resources where I have ideas or things that I've written out or created that you can have. So I'm just going to start with one and I'm going to work pretty quickly because I, I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me do all this stuff. So really all I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some doodles on this. Now I like using a nice black pen and I know that you can get, um, where's the one that, the one that's the most popular for Zen tangles or Zen doodles are these ones, the microns. And it's going to be backwards for you guys, but these brown micron ones, um, they're okay. I don't like them that much because I'm a bit heavy handed when I, when I draw. So I find that the little nibbly or the nib starts to bend after a while. So I get frustrated with them. So I did find that Micron actually does have a little roller ball tip, which I can't find mine. I don't know where it is, but I quite like that one too. Usually I just use um, some Pentels or my favorite one is, let's see. I have a whole little bucket of things here. So anyway, I, I, usually get grab them from staples of all places because they seem to have I can get a package of a whole bunch of them and they're sort of my favorite for doing doodles so with this one I can see that I've kind of overdone that little circle so I'm just gonna fix that little thing that I have going on there at the bottom and okay this is very very simple when I'm doing these I'm just going to start rendering this. So I'm going to use pencil crayon and I'm also going to use a little bit of marker. So the markers that I love to use are my Prismacolor markers. And uh, they're pretty good. These, these guys have lasted me for years. I think I had them when I was in interior design and they're still working. So it's pretty bright. So I'm going to start with just doing the outside because I like to fill the outside up with color and I'm going pretty fast. I'm not being really precise because I'm going to work back into this with um, pencil crayon. Look at that purple. It's so beautiful. I love purple. Are you guys doing this along with me? Anybody or. I'm trying to. <laughs> okay. I cut my circles out, so I have to. Oh, you cut them out to make circle. Well, you know, you could do that too, right? I worked, I worked too far ahead. Oh, well, oh, that's okay. I'll save those for later. I gotta. Yeah. Cause you know what? You can still doodle those and you know what you could do with them is 
Like usually at the end of this, I just draw a little string with a bow, but you could actually put a piece of string. Yep. You could actually. Or I could glue them to a piece of paper. And that's that's true. You we'll could also that glue them. Get there. That's right. You could glue them together and make them into a Christmas tree decoration. 3D. 3D. All right. So the pencils that I use the most are my um, Prismacolor pencils because I have lots of them. And so now that I've done that purple, I'm going to just sort of play around with what I can do with these other colors. So the purple isn't showing up too much on the purple, but it's, it's dulling some areas where the, sometimes when the ink gets really, really thick, it gets kind of shiny. So I'm just going to go around that a little bit and see if I can get rid of some of that shine that's showing up that I don't like. I'm not used to having this much light in my studio. I choose a different color. So I'm going to go in with a pink. I don't think it's making much of a difference. Okay, let's try. Again, a lot of this is experimentation. I'm going to try a yellow on top of this. And it's doing something, but not much. I think my, my purple was too strong. But I can still see something's happening anyway. I'm just trying to go around really fast here just to give it a little bit of that yellow over top of the purple. And it may not show up much on the on the computer, but it's showing up a little bit here. Then I could go back in with a darker color even and just do a little bit of a darker color around. one you can use is sometimes gray will do things gray like gray and yellow and white are kind of like a blending color and it will help blend out some of the things that are going on i don't know if it's changed much for you guys in this picture But okay, I'm gonna just start going in with the with the uh, pencil crayon in the thing. I think the paper I'm using is too shiny. It's not taking the 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 color very well. So you have to be careful with with paper, I guess, because you need to have if it's too shiny, then it doesn't take the pencil crayon, right? Because how pencil crayon works is it goes into the little grooves that are in the paper. So if your paper is too shiny, then you kind of get sort of what I have going on here where it's just not wanting to go on very well. But that's okay, I'll just keep doing it until I get something I like. And I, I'm seeing a lot of these little bits and pieces over here of the pencil crayon that are sh like shavings that are coming off, but that's okay. I'm gonna do two of these with the gray. And then I brought some other things that I didn't say were supplies, just to show you what else you can do with these little guys. Where is another one? I sharpened all my pencils. I just gotta find all the ones that are sharp now. One of the things I love doing with pencil crayon is blending the colors is just going over top of one color and see what it does. So I'm adding a little bit of purple to this. And let me just bring this up a little bit closer to the camera if I can. Oh my goodness, I'm just not very good at this. Okay, here we go. 
See, I'm starting to blend in a purple into that gray. So just adds a little bit more interest and it's not just a, a straight color then. I've, I've been using these uh, Prismacolors pencils for so long and I think they're part of a set that I had years and years ago, probably when I was in interior design. And this is the last of them. And I have a whole full set under my desk here that was given to me that I've barely touched because I got to use these old ones up first, which is really tough because I use them right down to the nubs. <laughs> so if, and if, if you think that this one's done, it's not because my mom gave me this cool little tool. So even when my pencil crayon gets down to this little, little nub that you can hardly hold on to, I can break it open and you put the lead in this, in this pencil. So I just, I did this one today. It was a little tiny blue. Now it's not the normal sort of mechanical pencil that you get from Stadler. It's a special one. I don't know what it is, but. It's pretty cool. Yeah, like the Stadler ones don't fit yep. these leads, right? But um, I don't know where I've it came never from. Seen one. That's great. I know. Yeah, my mom came across it one day and I was like, yeah, that's, I want that. <laughs> that's a bomb. Yeah. So, so my only problem is she gave me a little container because she, she thought it was so neat. She started breaking pencil crowns and putting the leads <laughs> all in a, in a container. So I have a container of pencil crayons leads that I have no idea if they're any good or not, because they're probably just kids pencil crayons. So <laughs> it'll take me the rest of my life to get through those before I can, I don't know. We'll see. So the thing with pencil crayons is you do want to have them fairly sharp because that's what helps get that color into onto the paper better. Um, which doesn't mean that you always have to have them sharp. You can have them dull and, and do like a, just sort of like a glazing with them or dull can be interesting too. So these aren't as vibrant as I want them to be. Maybe I just need to try the other side of these cards. But the yellow's okay. I think that pink that I put on here is making, it just looks like dirty pink now. But that's just all part of learning and trying. It feels to me like a, this is like a, it looks like the one that I'm doing is like a Dr. Seuss. Who? Dr. Seuss. Uh, who? Yeah, who? <laughs> Pretty funny. Great. Bill's going to sit here and he's going to be the uh, peanut gallery because he's, he's making sure all my technical stuff works. Just under the wire. And, and he'll push me when I'm not looking at the camera, which I'm not doing because I'm coloring, but... But then I'm going to show you some other things too that are kind of fun. So generally what I wanted to do with these is make it like an hour long, but that might change depending on the project that we're doing. And it might change if I just feel like, you know, we just want to hang out a little bit longer. I feel like I'm in kindergarten and I'm having a fun time. You know, and that's sort of what it is. Like, you know, um, and Leslie will... She, we did the, one of the projects that I want to do. Um, Leslie's already done them because they're um, it's doing snowflakes and like mm -hmm. cutting snowflakes like we did in school. Mm -hmm. And I never realized how complex it could be. And uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, when I was teaching the kids class, it was like a kids and adult class. Leslie brought in for the kids, she brought in Star Wars um, it was Star Wars uh, snowflakes. The kids were just over the moon, so excited about them. They were so cool. But it was it was interesting trying to do that because I had never I hadn't done snowflakes for years, and it was like okay, well, you know, there's a 
there's a bit of a science behind how you fold it properly to get, yeah, you know, five points or six points. And, and uh, there's lots of different things you can do then with them. And it's not always symmetrical if you don't fold it right. Yeah. Which that was the thing really that beautiful. Blew my mind. Yeah. They were great, but it blew my mind that they yeah. weren't symmetrical. Yeah. So that's one of the projects I have coming up and I, I didn't know if I was going to do it next week or the week after. So, but I think, you know, maybe next week, if we do the repurposed Christmas cards, then if you have some old Christmas cards, we can um, do some of those and then you can actually send them out this year. Okay. So I added a bit of rust to this. Um, so oh my goodness, I, one day I'll get this right. So you can see it sort of, it goes from rust to the purple. Because just nice. the way I shaded it, can you sort of see that? Yep. Anyway, I just think that's, I think when you, when you color like that, it's, it just makes it more interesting. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about glue because you're going to glue this onto a card. And I'm going to show you two types of glue. I love using glue sticks. And so I work at Michael's and Michael sells Elmer's glue sticks and Staples sells, I call it Uhu. I don't know if that's true, but mm -hmm. I call it Uhu because it's U-H-U. Um, Staples sells this. If I have my choice, I will always go for the Uhu glue because I find that this stuff just, is, it doesn't stick very well. So sorry. No, Elmer. it doesn't. It's horrible. You have but to there's put another so much on. There's another kind too. I'm gonna, I can't, I think it's scotch and it's really, really hard to find. You used to have it at Michael's and now oh. you have to get it from like Staples in the States primarily. And I just pick it up if I'm ever there, which is rare. So yeah. it used to be this scotch craft stick. Oh, I think that's back. Yep, I see that. And they were awesome. So yeah. now I have these little dinky guys and they're just scotch permanent glue sticks. Yeah. Love them. They work better than the others. The, the Uhu or Yuhu works quite well. Elmer's yeah. don't bother. Yeah. Everything just, comes. Up. Yeah. I just, I've had the worst time with the Elmer's, but the Uhu is what I use for all of my cards that I do and stuff like that. So that's a, a good glue. The other thing I wanted to try tonight when I'm doing these is, um, I wanted to embellish it a little bit more because I mean, it's kind of pretty. So what I'm going to do when I'm, when I'm showing that this is, is a, is a Christmas decoration, I'm going to take my ruler at the end of this. You don't need a ruler. You just, you can just wing it, but actually I'm just going to wing it. Cause then I can see where the center is. I was just going to draw a line and then I just do like a little bow on the top. If you move over to your right more, they might, your right. My right. They, they might, might be able to see what I'm doing. Right. It's hard to see this on this card because that purple, I made that purple too dark, but. Oh yeah, you can hardly even see it. It's a little line with a little bow on the top so that it looks like it's a decoration dangling on something. Um, but what I wanted to try was adding a little bit of interest to it just by adding a bit of glue I'm just cleaning my little tool here so that I can get a nice circle. I think it's a popsicle stick, uh, like a, a sucker stick. So I have a little bit of white glue here and I'm just going to put a dot there. I don't know, it's not very round. And a dot here, I think. And then this is what I would always keep away from my kids. I bought them sparkles, but I never let them have them because they were so messy with them. But you can put sparkles on it. And now it's sparkly and Christmassy. <laughs> so I think I have to do a third one because I can't just do two. There's a rule about I love that. that. That's fun. Right? And I, have like, I have glitter somewhere. I might have some of that sparkly glue. Don't yeah. know. 
Yeah. Might just so. have to be Elmer's and glitter. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I'm using that Eileen's tacky glue, like a, not a glue stick. I'm using actual glue. So I don't know. It just adds a little bit of sparkle. The other thing I wanted to do now I have to, I don't have one done is I have some white paint. And if you know my artwork, you know that I use a lot of dots. So I can do dots on there and that will give it a little bit of dimension, right? Because the dots will be lumpy. So anyway, that's sort of what I was gonna do. And then let me grab, I'm gonna grab a card that doesn't have a square on it. So this is just a, a nice card stock. What did I do with my sparkly little guy here? Oh, I lost my guy. Where'd he go? Well, I had him. I don't know what I did with that little piece I just finished. <laughs> I've lost it already. Better have a drink of wine. You put it off to the to mm. our left somewhere. Right oh, there it is. Here, there it is. Bill found it for me. Oh my goodness. And that's even a, that's not even a half glass of wine yet. I know <laughs> it's bad. Okay, so one of the things I like to do on these is sometimes I just draw with black line, but I'm going to draw with the purple because that's what I have. The whole card is purple. I'm actually I'm drawing on the sides of the card just so that I don't have white paper showing. It just sort of finishes it off a little bit nicer. Yep. So it's exactly. Very nice. Yeah. It's quite nice if you do it with black. Um, if you don't have a pen, you can do it with like a stamp pad and just rub it on the side of a stamp pad. And that's quite nice. So, okay. Get my uhu out. So I'm just gonna cover the whole back with this. Yeah, I'm getting it on my table too, but that's okay. And then I'm going to center it on this yellow piece of... So one of the things you can do when you're doing this is if you have a press of some sort, you can put these in the press not if you have the embossed cards, but um, you can put it into the press and it'll make it nice and nice and flat. So there it is, it's all framed, ready to go. Now I'm gonna just glue this, my Pratt & Lambert. I can't even tell you what color, Calendula. That's what the name of that color is. Good old 1755. Yeah, if it exists anymore. Like the flower. Is that is that what it is? It's a calendula like flower? I, don't, I think you pronounce it calendula, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, you so would know. You're the gardener. Uh, pot marigold. So it's a, it's, they're either bright yellow or bright orange. And there are some others in between, but generally mm -hmm. that's what they are. Okay. It's funny to know that they named a stock off of that. Yeah. I thought I so, so that's not a bad little card, right? I mean, it's it's it sort of Christmassy, not super Christmassy, but it's kind of pretty. More glitter. More oh, more glitter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you could do the same thing. Like you could draw like just even a Christmas tree and and do the same sort of thing where you're coloring it and putting it on a card. So. Mine isn't remotely Christmassy either, but it will be what will be. Oh, that looks really good, though. I don't know where my light is going. No, but I saw ah! it. It looks good. Anybody else got one that they've been working on? Yeah, I think I was thinking that I would actually end up hanging some on the tree. So that's why I cut some out. Well, I think that's a great idea, though, right? We'll find out. You just have to do both sides. That's right. Yep. Well, okay. the, the back side, this is just, um, 
I'm pretty sure this is just poster board, so it's shiny on the back. Yeah, won't, so do it won't take won't take the pick the color the same way. So I'd have to affix two back to back that are um yeah the flat flat side. Or you side. could do the coloring do do the coloring on the other side, like the 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 rougher side. And then your backside of your decoration is uh, shiny, right? True. I could see what happened with it. I would have to do it with, because right now I'm just doing pencils. So I, and I don't have a lot of markers. I used to, but I don't anymore. Long gone, Christmas dried up. Except, huh? Christmas is coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I'm trying to avoid accumulating more. I'll just come over to your house. <laughs> yeah, you can come borrow some of my, like, exactly. I only have a few. I'm sure. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's funny. I was working I the other day and I was sometimes when I, so I work at Michael's, I work in the frame shop at Shaughnessy. And sometimes I get clients who come in and they have, uh, a piece of artwork that maybe it's not art, but it's a, it's a poster or something and it's damaged or something like that. And actually the, the guy who came in, he brought in, it was a picture of tiger woods or something like that. And it was, it had been in something glass, the glass had broken, had gone right through and scratched the tiger oh, woods picture. Yeah. So he was yeah. asking me if I could touch it up a little bit. So, I mean, I, I have about, 10 markers in the frame shop that we use for touch-ups and stuff like that so I brought in my whole bucket and he was so pleased because I was able to touch up Tiger Woods a little bit so he wasn't so damaged but yeah they were they were kind of surprised when I walked in with my big bucket of pencil crowns because I have so many yeah I'm finding that the paper that I chose to do these I guess I should have tried it before tonight I just I did it in my sketchbook and the colors turned out so much nicer, but they're not turning out so nice here. Let me just pull my sketchbook. When I am working in my sketchbook and I have something like this where I've done a whole bunch of circles and stuff Ooh. like that, I do like to take one and render it, um, that, which is color it, um, just so that at least there's one that's, that's colored on the page. And yeah, you can see like, this is the difference between the paper is very dull, but this is actually showing that this is a, a sort of a copperish pencil crayon that I'm using. So it's taking that color a lot better. It's like, you know, it's like we're, we're coloring like little kids, you know, where did you ever do that with a friend where you had a coloring book and you'd each do a page? Did you, anybody else do that? <laughs> I'm sure I did, but I don't remember it. Oh, I, re I had, I think I had a, a, a coloring book from when I was little and I could see there was so many pages where I would paint on, I would color one page and my, my friend would paint, would, color the other page and we put our names on them. So I, I need to get her into these calls so that she can color with me once more. Seeing as you can come from anywhere in the world and join us tonight, that's really cool. That is really, so really Mexico. cool. That's just the main I do, uh I've been doing an art and soul uh, Zoom meeting for a while on Wednesday morning. And it's based out of, was originally based out of London, England. And a lot of the, well, I'm, I'm one of the few people in North America. Wow. And it's, yeah, we do some of this stuff, but she's in Belgium now, but it's really cool. They're all yeah. in the evening, I'm in the morning and it's just cool. So quite often when I'm coloring, um, I'll go really fast with my lower color, my base color, and it might be quite messy. Um, 
because I'm not trying to be careful. I'm not trying to fill in all this, all the holes and stuff like that. I kind of want to have it sort of a little bit um, graded, I guess, or see some of the stuff through. And then I can work back in with something like this yellow, which is I talked about it being more like a burnishing thing. And it's kind of neat when you go back over the color, anywhere that I've left a little bit of white becomes more yellow. And the orange becomes like a yellower orange. It's just, it makes it a little bit more um, vibrant, I think. And I'll show, I'll, I'll show this to the camera. I'll bring it closer to the camera here. So maybe you can see, I've done most of this, but down in this corner, it's just the base sort of orange that I've done. And I find that I can go back over things and just make them a little bit more interesting. I can add, I really want a purple of some sort here or a red. After you color in the uh, with the pencils, do you sometimes put water over the uh, pencil crayon? Water? Yes. No. Because water is what uh, the pencil crayons are wax, so the water's not going to do anything. Oh, okay. It would do something if you were using like those watercolor pencil crayons. Okay, that's what I'm using. Oh, well, there you go. So you could put water over them and they'll, they'll become much more painterly. Mm -hmm. So the pencil crayons that I'm using are wax based. So water won't do anything to them. So what are the, what are the names of your. I'm using your... Prismacolor, which is a pretty common uh, pencil crayon. It's an artist quality pencil crayon. Mm -hmm. The other one that I've discovered that's quite nice is called Caran d'Ache with a C, Karen Dash, and it, um, they're quite buttery and quite nice also. And I know a lot of pencil crayon artists who will use the Karen Dash more than, they like it better than Prismacolor. But Prismacolor is what I got, so that's what I'm using. So I just added a little bit of red down there on this one, and mm. now I'm going over it again with that, with this sort of, what is this color? chartreuse and uh, it's sort of blending it a little bit for me. So this one's not going to be a card. It's just going to be in my sketchbook. That's okay. So you are welcome to send to me um, if you've done like what we're doing, if, we're, if you've done something tonight, you can send me a picture of it. I'd love to be able to post them. That'd be fun to post what everybody's been working on or what people did in the, in the hour, which is really coming up fast. <laughs> it is. I don't know. Maybe it has to be longer. We'll see. <laughs> so are you doing this every Tuesday, Karen? I'm going to try and do this every Tuesday. Awesome. So I just thought it's, it's going to force me to do things. It'll help me um, because I have all these crafts that we did in that I was teaching and stuff like that. It'll just help me start using up that stuff and help me be creative to you know, try new things, right? There's so many things I wanted to do before and you know, <coughs> I wanted to figure out how to teach it to people and things like that. And it, it, it was just, I really had a hard time doing it. I'm just gonna grab my, my brush here. Just had to grab my brush because I keep using the side of my hand to brush the pencil crayon off and it's smudging and I, it bothers me. So I have my little drafting brush, which helps me get rid of the crumbs that I'm leaving without 
smudging them across my page. And it's always good to have a little pencil sharpener close to you to sharpen your pencils. I actually have an electric pencil sharpener, which I sharpened a whole bunch of my stuff before tonight. But then just like the little pencil sharpener and I have a dish that I can put the stuff in. Makes it just a little bit easier. Okay, so I gotta tell you the story about my dad. I tell everybody about this when it, cause whenever I color, I think about my dad because when I was little, he told me that I had to color, I had to color in circles because then I wouldn't go over the lines. Mm -hmm. And I never liked coloring circles because it made everything look woolly. <laughs> so I told him that. And as I went through interior design, so quite often when I'm coloring, I'm, I'm making sure I'm doing straight lines because I'm defying my dad. It's my rebellious side. Anyway, I'm visiting him and I tell him, I told him, I said, I don't color in circles because it, it makes everything woolly. And, and I said, so I never listened to you. He says, see, I taught you something. <laughs> he still has to take credit for how I color because <laughs> I guess I'm doing opposite what he told me. But he's like that. A little bit orange on this. So I just did purple. And now I'm just working back into the purple with a bit of orange just to cover up any of those little white spots. And if, and if the orange shows through, then those little white spots kind of look a little bit orange, which is kind of neat. Now I'm going to try my white dots on this one and see what happens. Is that acrylic paint you're using for the white dots? Yeah, this is a liquid acrylic, not the high flow. It's just the, uh, just the liquid one. It's just the right consistency for me to do the, the dots. So that kind of adds, you know, like they're gonna, they're gonna dry kind of lumpy. Is you that, know? is that that marker, marker type thing that you showed us? We had, you had in class, I bought no. one. This is my rubber a different, kit. different thing. So I'll show you what this is. Now, the other thing that's gonna happen with these dots is that they're not gonna stay white because the pigment in the pencil crayon will start to bleed into the dots. And you see those top ones there? Yeah. Right? They're, they're already turning like a purple color, right? Because the pigment in the pencil crayon is so strong, it's coming through the paint, but that's okay. So what I'm using is, and it's, this is how I do all my dots on my paintings and stuff like that, almost my dots anyway, is it's, um, 
It's like a rubber tipped brush. And you can get them at the art supply stores, but it's, I have dozens of, uh, probably a dozen of them. Cause I, I just, I use them all the time and I have different sizes and stuff, but they all do the same dots for me. And they're just pretty handy. It's really neat because these dots, like as I'm watching them, they're actually really, really sort of like a bright purple just around the dot. Like around the perimeter of it. Yeah, the edge of the dot is really, really bright pink. And then the, the inside of it is still white still for some of them anyway. Cool. But that's just a way to, you know, sort of embellish your, your, your piece with something else. The other thing I have, I have this other, um, oh, I forgot my tweezers. I have this other glitter. <laughs> they're huge chunks, like they're big chunks of glitter. They're like little squares. And I've used those before where I pick up a pair of tweezers and I put like three on in a spot side by side to make a line because they're just big squares, kind of fun. But that's a little bit um, picky. But that's okay. <laughs> these, I never let my girls play with these sparkles. <laughs> so I got thousands, I kept buying them for them, but then they just made such a mess with sparkles, I never wanted to give them to them. <laughs> so now I have them all. All for me. So I've only got one Christmas card made. I think I have a lot of work to do if I'm going to start sending out Christmas cards. Does anybody have anything to show? Leslie's got, oh, yeah, it just looks really good. I don't like this little quadrant here. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but you know, when you blend certain things and they don't come out the way you like them. Yeah, uh, eraser. <laughs> yeah, you could try an eraser. Yeah, right. but before back to school, I've never tried these Stadler. I love Stadler pencils as a rule. I've never tried color pencils before, yeah. so I bought those. No, I like Stadler. I like them pretty well. Uh, there are a couple of colors that I wish they had in this box of twenty four that they don't. Like yeah. they don't have a they don't have a decent orange, which drives me nuts um yeah. there's i have to make my own orange but uh otherwise they're pretty good and they're, they're kind of fun to work with they blend pretty well so generally sometimes yeah. i put one over another that i do not like and out comes the eraser and i try again yeah i have one stadler but i think it's actually a drafting pencil but it's a nice blue <laughs> so i use it quite a bit but yeah, I've got most most of my pencil crayons are the Prismacolor ones. Every once in a while, I have one that might be like a kid's pencil crayon, just because I liked the color of it, and it's like, well, I'll just I'll just use it because I like it. So, I still have some of those erasables. I just keep them in a Ziploc bag, and they were made by I don't know Crayola. Yeah, I think Crayola made those. Waste. And they, they weren't that great, but I hung on to them because they are erasable. Well, and I like and them I, for, I like them in the sketchbook. Like the kids Laurentian puzzle, 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 uh, pencils yeah. work pretty well. Yeah. Um, I was fond of those. Well, I'll use any of those. Like in my art classes, I'll use any, any pencil crayon that comes across my desk. But they just go into my pencil crayon. Um, yeah box for, for kids and they're just fine i use i'll use them in my sketchbook without any problems Oops, i just found an orange <laughs> i try this orange it's yeah two oranges oh, i must have saved them for a reason yeah i'm working back into this one on the card that doesn't take the pencil crayon very well because I can still do something that's kind of muted and nice I think with it 
So it'd be a shame to waste the fact that I actually put a circle on it. So I, I got to finish it now. So I don't know if you keep old uh, Christmas cards that people send you or not. Yes. I have a box of them. And um, if they're hand painted or handmade cards, I don't, I don't do much with them other than I have a book that I keep all the handmade cards in. It's like a, I've made it into sort of like a coffee, my Christmas coffee table book and handmade cards all go in that. Um, but the store-bought ones, they're so fun because there's so many glittery things and just interesting yeah. things on them. I saved I had, a bunch of them for diorama. I was saving them. We never ended up doing it. Yeah. But, you know, save things with trees and birds and snowmen and yeah, figuring, figuring I would do something with it at some point and have not. Yeah. Well... I think you can repurpose them and make your own cards out of them. So I'm just going to show you. I have a bin here. Good idea. Oh, I'm going to show you also, because we're doing these little circles on here, there's other things you can do with Christmas. And I'm going to show you this. This was one of the crafts that I was building for my art classes and stuff. And they're called, they're Christmas inches and, and stuff like that. So one year I did my Christmas cards and they were all this. It was just like a goofy little star that I drew and then I did white over it. And I did just the same thing I was doing with these circles, putting them on the card and that's how they all were. But then you can take things like, I've got some wrapping paper that I've put on, I've ripped and put on thing. Oh, look, here's one of my, it's gotta be one of my first ones. <laughs> um, oh, and I had this little felt, look at there's, Here's it's like the boot and there's some of the chunky uh, glitter on it, mm -hmm. a little piece of lace. So there's, there are lots of things you can, boy, there's a whole bunch of these guys in here. Look, I don't have to do so many. Here's another one. I think Caitlin must have done this one. A little snowman. Mm -hmm. But you can do things like that. I even have glitter paper that so much glitter. Anyway, I have this little bin of, of stuff that I was I had started. But here is my bin of Christmas cards. And I don't literally have to cut this all out. I could use parts of this or parts of this. Like even, you know, if I don't use the tree, this part is also very interesting, you know, and you know, I don't, I don't necessarily want to just take, you can see I've already taken some circles of stuff. Even the, the snowflakes in some of these, like the chunks of glitter are kind of fun. So I have all these cards that, you know, there's parts of them. There goes the cat. There's parts of them that I can use in a new card. I'm getting texts. Who's me? Sorry. Are you sending me texts? Yeah. Hmm, okay. Anyway, so I just thought maybe next week we could, I could take some of these apart and we could try making some cards. Look at this one. This one's got felt on it, like the brocade sort of felt. I'm sure there's something neat I can do with that. So um, yeah, so if you want to join me next week, I'm going to do that. And then the week after I was thinking we would do maybe the snowflakes in um, Leslie, we did it where we put the snowflakes on a board, and I think we could probably do that next week, or not next week, but the week after, because it'll be too late for sending Christmas cards by then. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you gotta you gotta make all your Christmas cards this week so you can get them sent off in time, especially if they're coming from Mexico. Right. I don't send out Christmas cards. <laughs> You mean you're not going to have one done for, for at least one to send? No, I don't think so. <laughs> you can just do one and then photograph it and then send it out in emails. <laughs> and there's yep. your 
that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That I could do that. Yeah. Anyway. It is kind of just sort of like playing and doing something creative. So, and I'm hoping this, this just gets my creative juices going. Cause I, when I start doing things like this, it's like, Oh, well, maybe I could do this with it or, you know, like, Oh, put them together and make a decoration out of it. Or what else can I do with this? And that's what gets me going is, is what else can I do with these things? And how can I improve it? How can I make it different? So that's what I like about all this. I to figure out what to do with my background. You know, yeah. I got all this color and yeah. That's why I like I to know. sometimes I just like to do that marker thing and then first. Yeah. Just then it just sort of dictates, I guess, or fills it up and then yep. you don't have to worry about it so much. Yeah. So it's after eight. It's after eight. My timekeeper is telling me it's after eight. Anyway, how are you guys doing? So far, so good. I think this is fun. It's so relaxing. Yeah, it is. No, it's just nice. Sitting with a bunch of friends, coloring. And drinking wine. Yep. <laughs> and drinking wine or water or whatever you want. And I guess it's kind of nice because you don't have to, sh you don't have to show what you're doing. You can just do what you want and you can share or not share. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I've decided to try to add some dark lines in there. I'm not sure if I'm loving it, but it will, we'll see it. We'll see what it turns out to do. Well, you know, sometimes black can just really, um, sort of anchor it too. Yep. Let's see. And you know, the doodles don't have to be like super complex. As you can see, I'm just doing something pretty simple, especially when you're working this small, you don't want to get too complex. You just be something simple. Or marker should I use? Okay, this time I chose like a lighter color to put around that ball, so that's better. And sparkles because pen picked up the sparkles. Oh, so what? the pen, it's interesting to see what the pen is doing. I did some dots across an area and it's, they're quite bleeding. Oh, are they? They're banding in, in not very pleasant ways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> not liking that and then I'm stuck. That's okay. Well, that's how it goes, right? Sometimes it yes, works, it sometimes it doesn't. And you know what? Sometimes when it doesn't work, you just take it and you just glue it in your sketchbook. <laughs> and hmm. lesson learned. <laughs> good idea. Right? Because that's where that stuff goes is, is when you're experimenting, you can just put it in the sketchbook. You can even explain why, what happened or what you did that, that, or what you would do different or something like that. And then that sketchbook becomes that learning sort of area. So I went pretty messy with this green around this edge here, but I kind of, I don't mind it actually, because it's kind of, you know, I've got my marker that I put on there and now I'm just sort of, you know, adding a little bit of color to it all the way around and blending it a bit. Like it's on a really bright Christmas tree because of the green. Or maybe that's the part that you cut out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shoot. Oh, well. Yeah. I like the idea. Well, and you just got to play with it a bit. Yep. Try different colors and. Okay, here we go. That one's got my little thing on the top that you can see. So it sort of looks like a Christmas decoration. And I'll probably add some sparkles to it too. Because I think those are just fun. You're very quick. Yeah, because I don't I don't think people want to really sit here and watch me color forever. <laughs> so I gotta go fast. <laughs> When I, when I sit in my art groups and somebody's doing a demo, I'm always sketching at the same time, but it's like, it's hard because I just want to, I just want to get up and go do it. And so and that's the hard part. Okay. For this one, I'm just going to do the edges black. So I've got a Sharpie marker. The trick when you're doing that is make sure that you're holding the artwork facing away from the pen. Because if I slip, then I'm just drawing on the back of my decoration and I don't slip and draw on the front of my piece because that would be sad. So that black kind of bled in a little bit, but you can see that black edge a little bit. Oh yeah. And then I can attach it to my card. Then I'll have two done. Woohoo. Of course, I'm rushing, so I just uh, squished my glue where my sparkle is, so now i got to add more sparkles. There, little Christmas card. 
You're done. How many of you guys done? I've done two, two and a half. Oh. Do you want to show? <laughs> Not particularly. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just, well, I'll, I'll, what would I do? Sure. Just take, take a picture of it or how do I show it? Just, just show it in front of your, just hold it up. Oh, look, they're lovely. Okay. I just I just have really cheap uh, pencil crayons. Well, you're using the watercolor pencil crayons, is that right? Yes, yes I am. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, we we could play with those for days too. <laughs> <laughs> I have some of those. We'll be able to do some watercolor stuff, um, probably later. I've got some fun little things. I guess, you know, even, you know, the other thing we could do is if I'm doing a project and um, I have a specific surface that we're going to do it on, I could always mail it to you ahead of time. And that'd be kind of fun. Sending you a little bit of stuff down in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, it would take a month to get here. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> I better send you some stuff now. <laughs> Right. And then we'll do it in a couple of months, right? Mm -hmm. so. Anyway, so I've done two. Uh, keep working on them. If you want to send me pictures of what you've got done or your finished cards, you're welcome to, and I'll post them. And uh, we can play some more. And next week, yeah, bring some of your Christmas cards and see if we can make something new out of them. Oh, you switched off. Okay, because I'm not doing anything anymore. <laughs> Now it's just me. So, mm -hmm. so thank you guys for, for uh, coming and playing with me tonight and we'll see how it goes. And if, <laughs> if, if we find an hour is not enough, well, obviously we can go over because we have, we own zoom or we have, have a subscription to zoom. So it doesn't have to be just an hour. <laughs> so we can go as long as we need to so it'd be kind of fun because we could even do projects that are more than one sitting right like one of the things that I was doing in my art classes is I was teaching like paper mache or something like that so we could start a project and then finish it the following week so there's always things like that that we could do and even if you are able to tune into the first week for example for the paper mache in the second week if you can't see it if we can if I'm taping these, then at least you can watch it later and, and get caught up or something like that. So um, I was hoping to go into things where I'm teaching maybe a little bit about framing. Um, I was thinking about teaching you guys how to stretch a canvas, um, things like that. So um, some, of the tools you use. some of the tools I use, how to make handmade tools, and uh, we can get into some painting and stuff like that probably all abstract because that's what I am and uh, just go from there. So if you do have, sketchbooks. yeah, sketchbooks, it will be big. So if you have ideas of what you'd like to see, um, please, you know, you can just email me, Karen Biko, Karen at Karen Biko .com, And uh, let me know. And, and she checks her emails within a week or two. So. Yeah. I'm not very good with my email. <laughs> I'm also not very good with social media. So um, I've kind of backed off from that. So Bill's Bill's rounding most of that up for me. So he's. That was a good chat today, Leslie. Yeah, <laughs> it's, usually, <laughs> it's usually Bill. <laughs> so um, yeah, I actually, I don't have Facebook on my phone um, because I was banned from Facebook. <laughs> about really? Why? Um, somebody hacked into my email and then they, um, pushed Facebook four times, five they times so that they would reset my Facebook page. And then they must've posted something inappropriate on my page, but not only did they do that, they went in and they grabbed Calgary community painters, um, their Facebook page. They got into that because I was an admin. They kicked all the admins off and took the, the page. Oh my so, God. 
because they were really after all the all the clients who the the pay, people who follow CCPS. So that's what they did. And so I wrote, we wrote to Facebook and said, it's not me. I was hacked. You can see, look at my history. And they were like, no, nope, our decision stands. Oh, for Pete's sake. Yeah. So I am back on Facebook because I have Bill created a new, new email that I don't ever use, but he created an email for Facebook for me so that I could get back on. But my phone number is still linked with that banned Facebook page. So my phone number can never be used for Facebook. So. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Whatever. Big tech. Anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I just sort of, you know, with that kind of thing, I just, you know, whatever. And I, I am. <laughs> so Bill, Bill's persevering, trying to do the Facebook stuff for me because I'm very unhappy with it, but anyway, but I'm happy that you guys came and joined me tonight. So that's great. So anyway, well, I hope you had fun. Thank you. Yeah. Know. Great fun. fun. And uh, great fun to play. Well, just we'll play and see what happens. And fiddle. And fiddle. I colored. That it looked really neat. good last night. A gray. And I I'm sort of haloed around it. So I love how the yeah. lines kind of go out of the circle. Yeah. And That's then important. that, there's a line in here. That was my dots. And I went over it. I'm not still thrilled, but it's better than the dots bleeding all over the place. <laughs> But oh, I really like really the good. colors. Yeah, it looks really I good. I like yeah. what the colors did. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was fun. Really good. So, that's great. Okay. Nice. Oh, like one card. <laughs> nice. I What's up? Cool. Oh, you, you did a bow on top. That's great. I put a bow on it. It's like an attachment. Yeah, but, that's great. Yeah. It was you know, fun. Yeah. Just such a simple idea, right? But you can yeah. do so many things yep. with it right and use little bits with it so mm-hmm. <laughs> that's me being excited so thanks guys for for joining me and uh i'll hopefully see you next week same time same place hey thank you for having us same thanks, wine Karen. all right we'll see you then. <laughs> okay thank take you. care of you good guys night, buddy. good night good night, good night. Good night. you too